телевизия Alma Mater прекара две седмици в Торино, Италия по програма Еразъм. През цялото време си задавахме въпроси за това как живеят младите хора тук, какви са проблемите на студентите и какви са техните решения. За да разберем отговорите, говорихме с политици, преподаватели и студенти. Пристигаме в Торино в навечерието на изборите в Италия. Всички европейски лидери са насочили погледите си към Рим, защото и най-малката политическа грешка може да бъде фатална за целия Европейски съюз. А в Италия все по-често споменават разликите между работливия север и мързеливия юг и всички са затаили дъх в очакване. Докато се разхождахме по тарките на Торино и се занимавахме с задачите си в курса по Еразъм, от първите страници на вестниците крещят заглавия за смяната на папата и правителството. Безисходица по-италиански. Такъв е първият коментар на медиите след обявяването на крайните резултати от изборите. Контролът на долната камара на парламента е спечелен от лявоцентристката коалиция на Пиер Луиджи Берсани. Силвио Бравускони обаче успява да спечели битката в Сената. Но изненадата на тези избори всъщност дойде от известния комик Бепе Грило и неговото движение Пет звезди. Според мнозина той е победител в политическата ни превара, защото е събрал най-много проценти от гласовете без да влиза в коалиция. Бепе Грило е успял да спечели на своя страна цяло едно поколение, което не иска да приеме поредните обещания на политиците. Той сам казва, че неговата победа дава началото на война на поколение. Последният ден от управлението си вече бившият министр на труда Елза Форнеро се срещна с студентите по Еразъм. А екипът на Алма Матер потърси преподавател по политология, който да ни обясни ситуацията в Италия. Камелия. Как е флауера. И ти е от София. Я чета, че има много неплоти млади хора в Европейския юнион. И, всъщност, съм на някои статистики, There are 14 million unemployed young people. What is the situation in Italy and how do you manage it? Is it a problem here? Absolutely, yes. I tried to enact a labor market reform. I think that uh, the, the problem of uh, unemployment for young people is a problem all around Europe. Uh, probably uh, this problem is uh, more relevant in, in Italy because we are not competitive uh, globally speaking we are not competitive with other countries uh, our uh, industrial production is going down and uh, the price of job market is very high very expensive compared with other countries and the objectives were mainly twofold making the market the labor market more inclusive The second objective is making the market more dynamic. We had a lot of flexibility in this country, but this flexibility um, had been somehow misused and had resulted in the young having only very precarious jobs. In the last 30 years, our government, governments didn't invest anything in research, in teaching, in schooling, and uh, this is today a, a dramatic problem. We have lots and lots of young people with uh, degrees, sometimes with master degrees, but unemployed or without the opportunity to make a job at the level of their education. But of course, in a recession, it's really very difficult. It's not that just by changing norms that you reduce unemployment. To do this, I would have needed money in order to reduce labor cost. The Berlusconi government was a failure. Uh, I think that he was uh, one of the uh, problems of uh, Italy because uh, he's, he was absolutely not good in governing. Uh, he, his main idea was just to save himself. 
uh, he had this uh, populistic uh, imprint. Generally speaking, the problem with Italy is that uh, the level, the, the middle level of uh, the political elite is very, very low and I think that it's decreasing. We have this, uh, I think, absolutely abnormal situation of lots of movements, parties, named with the, the name of, of individuals. Uh, think about also Grillo movement, move, movement Five Stars. Again, here we have the, uh, a, a very strange situation. We are a democratic countries, country, but at the same time uh, we love, Italian citizens love this kind of very strange um, politicians, very demagogic, very populistic. I don't want to talk about the lost generation also because I, I have a son of 11 now and I don't want to imagine that it will be impossible for him uh, to, to survive. Ето какво ни накара да си припомним за изгубеното поколение. Така са известни съвременниците на една от най-големите економически кризи, които светът помни. Генерацията след 1989 година, която в момента струва 153 милиарда евро годишно на страните от Европейския съюз и се състои от 14 милиона безработни младежи. В Италия младите без работа струват на държавата повече от 32 милиарда евро годишно. Но за студентите, с които говорихме в Торино, проблемът не е економически или политически, а житейски. This historical moment, uh, be a student, uh, we can say it, it's not enough anymore. You have to find yourself uh, a way to live in a country like this where young uh, people usually can find a job. This coupon, I will use it for having a free lunch. They gave to me at the university, so I can eat without spending money. And it's a good thing because uh, there's not such a good food here. So if you can eat for free, it's uh, pretty better. They give coupons usually to students in your university? Um, well, it depends because uh, there is a, a thing about uh, the university. We all have our smart card, our badge. And uh, at the beginning, the first month of the year, we put uh, our economical information on the internet, uh, and uh, we go to a graduation on a ranking. In base of which ranking are we? Are we? Uh, it's possible to have all the year the eating for free, or maybe with a less amount of money. It depends on how much money do you have in your house. So. Uh, yes, I have uh, for free because uh, because of my economical situation of my family, so I can use it and uh, it's pretty useful because uh, for the young students that usually eat outside home and they're all uh, busy with the university, it's pretty useful because uh, in the opposite case they should spend money every day and it becomes quite a problem. Pasta, speck and bechamel. Thank you, Parmigiano. Grazie. I study cinema at the Faculty of Educational Science here in Turin. When you have finished the high school, you have to choose your, your study path for the future. You don't have to think on what is useful for your future. But you have to think for what is good for you. That's, uh, these are the kinds of questions that I made to myself after uh, I started university. To follow the mind or the art, and then the art has won. Because if I had to waste five years of my life studying something that can give me work, at least I shall study something that I love as cinema. Bite, it's good. Good cheese. Do you like Italian food? Mm, yeah, 
Absolutely. It's probably the best food uh, in the world. The fact is that uh, here in this canteen uh, we cannot really talk about uh, Italian food. The students in Italy are in the death row. I can say maybe I'm a bit extreme, but uh, basically it's like this because you have uh, a lot of good brains here in Italy, but uh, when your country doesn't give you the opportunities uh, to work and to do what you love, what can you do? Escape. The, especially in uh, a field like mine, the, the art, uh, it's one of those uh, fields where uh, you can work uh, just if you're good enough uh, to put yourself under the spotlight. I'm not saying uh, that uh, Italian students uh, don't have to go outside. It's good, it's a great thing, but it doesn't have to be, to, they don't have to be forced to do it. It just has to be an individual option. There should be no difference, no higher university and lower university. But uh, this is a problem of structure, of mentality. The students from north to south uh, are pretty the same. They all want the same force, the same will of uh, achieving something, of studying something. So, it's more a problem of uh, what's uh, around them, the possibilities they have. You probably know we, we've had the elections in these days and uh, the result was pretty astonishing because nobody has won and uh, many people who are in politics uh, for many years uh, and they don't have anything to say anymore are still here and they still have the power to decide of our lives. In my opinion, there are many things uh, to change, but the main problem is not the politician itself, it's the Italian mentality of the politician. If I had to say a good thing about Italy, I can say something about Italians. They're warm tempers because they're pretty wide open, very bad, and they're all this inner force and uh, you can't love it. Lots of people just don't study because they don't have money to pay for studies. I work in uh, the National Museum of uh, Natural History at the weekends. And I receive uh, like below <laughs> the minimum salary. salary. I, I live at my parents. I intend to go out at the end of the year, but uh, it's really not possible because the rents are very, very expensive in Lisbon. Hi, I'm Joel. I'm from Portugal, Lisbon, and I study cinema. Uh, I think that is obvious that Italy is in crisis. Uh, but uh, I think that is obvious too that uh, Portugal is more in crisis than Italy. At least is my point of view. I mean, I live in Portugal and I have a more deep experience of the country. So I can see exactly how deep is Italy crisis. But I think it's obvious. I mean, for the people I speak, I have spoken here in Turin. I can see that uh, they have no jobs and it's difficult and everybody is going, wants to go abroad to study or to have more opportunities. Uh, the cause for the problems in Portugal, I think uh, it's the fact that our governments, uh, because of the depths that we have uh, to the UA, the, the European Union, uh, they have to cut our salaries and uh, everything, so we have no how can I say it, like uh, power to buy, I don't know if that's correct. But, and uh, so we cannot uh, live well. Uh, we don't have salaries, we work uh, the twice as we did before the crisis. Uh, people who worked in a place like for 30 years now are being uh, fired and families can't support themselves. And there are some uh, help institutes and organizations, but they can't help uh, everybody. So that's wh what is happening. And the cause, I think, is uh, political, in my opinion, as, I as here in Italy, actually. Well, 
Well, my name is Daniele, but everybody call me Dani. I'm from Italy. I'm 27 years old. Uh, I'm studying in Torino now, but I come from Palermo in Sicily. Um, I like to travel. I'm a traveler. Uh, I've done AVS. I was a volunteer for United Nations. I have been in Ecuador, Spain, France, everywhere. Uh, so that's me. There are differences between South and North. Uh, this difference is, of course, is about organization and, I mean, I'm from the South, so it's difficult to say, but I have to admit that here is quite better for work and things like this. Uh, but in the South we have a more like a relaxed style that sometimes is good. We enjoy a little bit more the life. I think that there are some kind of party or organization that want to separate the North from the South. Uh, especially there is one that is called Lega North. Uh, that for me is like a crazy party, but they want to separate. They are xenophobic and they are against uh, immigration and things like this. They say that uh, people from the south just stole money and use the money of the north to do stupid things in the south. That we are like um, a disease of Italy or something like this. So what they want to do is divide the north from the south uh, to maintain all the money in the north, all the industry from, uh, from the north. One city like this, Torino, is full of people coming from the south just to work. And these are honest people that are paying taxes and everything. So without south people, the north is not the same. I have uh, been in Bulgaria for, uh, during an AVS for uh, five months in uh, one organization called IIC uh, in Razlog and uh, it was one of the best experiences of my life. I think that the principal reason, uh, the, the principal difference between Bulgaria and Italy are the style of life. I mean, I was thinking for example that um, the social life in Bulgaria is really important. You, you used to uh, live all together and to share food, for example, it's really common you put your plate in the middle of the table and this is something that I really love it because I love to share things and have, it's like have a really big family and you feel all the time like protected by this big family. В крайна сметка се оказа, че студентите от различни държави имат подобни страхове за това дали ще си намерят работа и как те живеят от тук на Сетне. Напускаме Италия с надеждата, че всеки от нашите герои ще намери своят път.